In this video, I'm going to walk through the use of the bin packing workflow, which is a view that assists the user in running the bind and schedule threads analysis. This analysis can be used on models that have processors and threads to determine if the threads are schedule schedulable on the set of available processors, and if so, makes assignments as to which threads should be executed on which processors. In this video, I'm going to use a simple example um, system that just has two processors, as you can see here, a process subcomponent, and then within that process have three threads. So the elements of interest are just the two processors and the three threads. And uh, just to show you the uh, textual declarative model, uh, here is my system with the two processors and the three threads down here. Now, the bin packing analysis depends on properties set on both the processors and the threads in order to uh, make it, uh, run its analysis. And you can see certain properties such as the scheduling protocol applied and period and compute execution time applied to the threads. Now I've left a couple properties missing in order to demonstrate one element of the, of the workflow. But these properties do need to be in place. Um, and the way of running the analysis uh, as is without the workflow is to select the, uh, the model and then go up into the analysis menu and say bind and schedule threads. And I'm going to just pick the default of immediate partition of groups and we'll see that our system is not schedulable and I know that the reason for that is because there are a few properties missing. Now that's where the workflow comes in. The workflow helps the user in, in specifying the needed and some optional properties uh, in order to be ready to run the actual bin packer analysis. And I already have the view open, but to show you how to get the view open, uh, you just click on Window, Show View, Other, and then select Bin Packing Workflow under the AADL category. And the first step is selecting the instance model for which this workflow should um, be based upon. And I've already got that selected here, but I'll select it again. And you'll see it goes all the way from selecting an instance model down at the very end to running the bin packer. Now you'll see that this action is disabled. I can't execute the bin packer right now because there are problems that need addressed um, midway through this workflow. And we can see some of those uh, already. We have problems with the scheduling protocol. Uh, we have problems with period and compute execution time. Uh, we're okay with processor binding. And uh, we don't know yet about the uh, deadline because deadline uh, depends upon previous steps to be completed before we can uh, address the deadline. But uh, I'll open up this dialog first. Uh, which there's a problem with the scheduling protocol, and we can see an error marker attached here to processor 2 and a message simply saying that we're missing a scheduling protocol. And so right here in the dialog, I can address that and select a scheduling protocol for processor 2, and I've chosen RMS just like processor 1. And when I click OK, that property is saved to both the instance model and the declarative model, so you can see that dialog wrote out this property here that's saying that processor 2 has a scheduling protocol of RMS. And now that we can also see um, that the status is OK for the scheduling protocol, uh, but we still have a problem with uh, period and compute execution time. So if we open up that dialog, we see that there's a problem on thread 2, and if we hover over thread 2, we see that it's missing the period. And so I can come in here and edit it directly and just add a period. Now one nice thing about uh, the editing in this cell is that there are some features such as content assist and some validation that's here as I'm typing. Uh, so for example you can see that already there's an error because I've just wrote 10 and this is a value that requires a unit and so you can see number value is missing a unit and this is the same error message that you would get 
when typing this into a textual editor. Another thing that this um, in place editor has is content assist. So if I press control space, I can see the list of unit literals for this property, and I'm going to go ahead and select millisecond. And now we can see uh, I've specified 10 milliseconds, so there are no more errors in this dialog. I can go ahead and click OK, and we can see the period property has been written out to the declarative file, and also the instance model has been modified. And now we can see that all of uh, the boxes, intermediate boxes, have a status of OK. And we can now run the bin packer and see what kind of results we get. And we see since I specified uh, 10 milliseconds for thread 2, the system is schedulable. Uh, and here's the results telling you uh, what the uh, loads are for the two processors and also what the bindings are, which threads are assigned to uh, which processor. So we can see processor 1 is going to execute both threads 3 and 2, while the remaining thread is, will be executed on processor 2. Now, to address these other boxes, these the processor binding box and the deadline box deal with optional properties. Um, just to show the processor binding box, what this can be used for is if given a certain thread, you can specify uh, which processors the bin packer is permitted to bind that thread to. Uh, now, in the, in this case, I only have two processors, so that's not. Uh, an exciting uh, example. Um, but the way that would work is, let's say I'm interested in constraining thread 1, and over here under the allowed category I can say which processors it's allowed to be executed on. Um, another uh, interesting property here is the actual processor binding. Suppose I don't want the bin packer to make a, a decision as to which processor thread 1 should, should run on. I want to be able to say it runs on processor 1. And under this situation, thread 1 executes on processor 1, but the bin packer will be able to make its own decisions about thread 2 and thread 3. Now there is some simple validation here. Um, you can only have one actual processor binding per thread. So if I try to have multiple actual processor bindings, I get a little error. Uh, condition saying that only one actual processor binding is permitted. And then another uh, simple validation. If I have an actual processor binding that is not in the set of allowed that I've specified, that's also another error condition. And if these error conditions show up in the model properties um, already, uh, those, those error situations will show up in this dialog and there will be a status here in the processor binding box saying that those issues need to be addressed. But I'm going to go ahead and click cancel and not write these properties out to the file. Another optional property that can be specified is the deadline. And, uh, and by default, the deadline for each thread is the same as the period. Uh, but I can come in here and specify something else, uh, such as um, eight milliseconds, and so now I have a different deadline than the period, and I can specify uh, different deadlines for all of the threads in my entire system. Uh, and like the processor binding box, this one does have some validation in it. So right now I've got 8 milliseconds, but if I do something like change it to 8 hours, well now we have a problem because the deadline cannot be uh, greater than the period. And so uh, I've shown how how these boxes can be used to manipulate the properties uh, that are used and required for the bin packer. It's also possible to start with a uh, model without any properties uh, at all, and then just use these dialogs to specify uh, all of all of the properties.